Welcome to Five Spice, a program for simulating analog circuits. In this video, I'll go over working with graphs. So to start, let's go up and look at the analysis selection and edit. This both selects the analysis, and then we have a tab here for setting up the graphs and tables. Uh, we've covered most of this before in other videos. So primarily what I'm going to be talking about is working with the graph after it's visible in the program. So let's start here with the an AC analysis. And notice that over here we've entered R2, which is a component in the schematic, and given it, given it a range from 10k to 5k. So we're going to do the analysis multiple times, sweeping the analysis as we call it, and plot it in one graph. So we go down and we're going to cover 10k, 10 kilohertz to 10 megahertz. So let's just run the analysis and take a look at the graph. Okay, so this is a pretty busy graph and that's going to let us explain all these different things. If you remember, these are the cursors which uh, control the readout over here. And we want to see how to manipulate things in this graph. So let's start with just getting the cursors on the trace that we want. On the left we have magnitude. There's three magnitude traces in solid lines. On the right we have phase and there's three phase traces in dotted lines. And you can see that up here. It's dotted for the right axis and the solid lines are on the left. So if we simply you can see also that the cursor symbol is over here, so it's on the solid line. If we come here, you can see it drops down. It's a little more obvious if I go here. It's on this colored dotted line. Now, the reason we have multiple traces is because we have multiple values for R2. That's the component that we were sweeping. And these are the three values that were simulated. So if we go back for a moment here and look at the magnitudes, this is the magnitude for R2 equals 10,000 ohms. If we want to see the magnitude for R2 equals 75 ohms, we do that. And for 5,000 ohms, we do that. And in the same way, we could look at the phase. So now the top trace here is in color, and that's the phase for 5,000 ohms, 7,500 ohms, and 10,000 ohms. So let's go back up here where it's easiest to see things. The cursors control or drive this readout here. And while it's easy enough to just use one cursor, life gets a little more interesting if we want to say find the 3 dB point, the minus 3 dB point. We can, this, I'm moving the one with the aqua color, which is this one. And keep your eye on the delta y entry here as I move this aqua one into the roll off. And we can see here that we've got about minus 1.3 dB and there's somewhere right in there. Well, it's tricky. There we go. Minus 2.99 dB and then that's going to be at a frequency of 4.167 megahertz, which we can see here. So the delta y's and delta x's can be very useful. Now, here's a part that's maybe not quite as clear. Some of the graphs compute parameters over the range between the cursors. For, instance, for example, here's the maximum value between the cursor and here's the minimum. What you want to keep your eye on is the number of points, which is reported right here. So there are, SPICE has computed 13 data points between the cursors. And you know, as I move the cursors closer together, we get fewer and fewer points. For a max and min, you probably don't care, but in transient analysis, if you're computing an RMS number here, you need to have a significant number of data points. So continuing on, if we double click the graph, we bring up the rescaling axes. And basically, 
you can put any values you want in for the maximum and the minimum of the graph. You can see right now it's reporting we have plus 8 to minus 4. Uh, we can change that to minus 3 and just hit this and you can see it's changed immediately. We can also change the horizontal scale. Uh, normally it shows the full range the analysis was carried out over, but we could go from say 1 meg to 10 megs. Now you can see the 1 meg to 10 meg area is blown up. And one final totally important thing is, suppose we wanted to keep this graph for a while. We need to click on the lock button. Once you've pressed that and it says locked, the next simulation will produce a new graph. If this is unlocked, the next simulation will simply overwrite this one. So for example, I'm going to hit the F9 function key, which will rerun the simulation, and now we have an identical graph that was just created. And notice that if we want to, I just right clicked here on the tab or in the graph itself, you can delete this. So right click offers the locking and unlocking, you can call up rescale axis, you can choose to show it here in a separate window. You can export the data to a file, well export the data to a file for a spreadsheet or save the image of the graph. And of course you can delete things. So next let's move on to a different analysis. So we're back up to analyze, select and edit, and let's take a look at a DC analysis. Now this is not the same as DC bias. This is going to step the input voltage to the circuit through a bunch of DC voltage steps. And so we'll select that and let's go back and look at the schematic for a second because we need to see something. In this resistor here, we have a temperature coefficient entered. So that's R2. And in this analysis, the, the swept temperature one, we have set a sweep between 25 and 100 degrees C for the circuit. So that's going to modify the value of that resistance. So let's uh, come down here, run the analysis. Notice we still have the other one hiding back there. And here is now our circuit output DC volts, circuit input DC volts transfer function. The actual data points are shown in little colored dots and the lines are just drawn to help our imaginations out. And notice down here, here we have the swept or value again. We have 25 degrees C and you can see the cursors are on the lower trace which is in red if you can notice that. And then we can go up to the 100 degrees C line. And again changing the temperature is going to change which plot they're on and it's going to change the values since we're on a different plot. And that's basically why I wanted to show you. Thanks for watching.